right, brothers and sisters. Kakas and dadas, dadas and kakas all over the world. Yes, I am talking to you. Welcome back. I had to pop in. This is the African Times talking to each and every one of you all over the world. Whichever part of the day this message finds you. Habariza Sabui, Habariza Mchana, Habariza Gioni, brothers and sisters all over the world. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. As I said, the name of this channel is The African Times. If you're new to this channel, we talk about world events that affect people that look like you and me. We look at those events from an African, a black African perspective. A black African consciousness. We try to elevate our minds to a point where we understand that our purpose in life as human beings, people, is to provide for the safety and security and prosperity of our children, our children's children, our elders, and to look out for our general posterity. Okay, everybody, look, I had to jump back in, just released a video a moment ago that was dealing with and uh, our good brother Grandmaster Jay and yes we have to we have some f unfinished business we have to take care of uh, we have to deal with this situation it's an emergency as I told you before need all hands on deck we need people standing up doing the things that they're supposed to do men men need to stand up be brave have courage put fear behind you we, we have a letter writing campaign that needs to take place and there's a deadline on March 1st. We need to get as many letters in as we can to support our brother. This is the most serious thing that you have happening in your life right now. And I don't say that lightly, I'm telling you. You have not witnessed in the history of your living an individual who has come forth and done the things that this man has done. And let me give you a quick example for those of you who uh, may be doubters and naysayers. Let me make sure you understand just do a quick search, look back in history, and see how many armed protests there have been since, since the enslaved brothers and sisters were enslaved and then freed. Look back on it. You won't find dozens and hundreds. You won't find that. Why will you not find that? You will not find that because it requires courage to do that. It requires an individual who understands and recognizes that his fear has to be set aside to do what's right for our children, our family, people that look like me and you all over the world. You won't find many of those occasions because that fear is there. And that fear prevents men from standing up. Not all men, but many men. And so our good brother, Grandmaster Jay, John Fitzgerald Johnson, a courageous brother, along with all of the good brothers and sisters who joined with him, the good brothers and sisters of Infac, courageous, brave heroes who out of love for their people were able to set their fear aside to do what's necessary. Now you, you do understand, I'm not saying that they, they didn't have fear. Some of them may not. But I'm sure some of them did. The, the thing about fear is whether you have it or don't have it, you don't allow that fear to paralyze you, to prevent you from acting and moving. What you should fear more is the alternative of inaction. Now, I'm going to do another video on courage and fear later. That's not the purpose of this video, but I had to lay the groundwork so that you understand what's at stake. This is a state of emergency. 
That's why I'm calling on heroes. People who understand what I just said will put their fear behind them so that we can do what needs to be done. And right now what needs to be done is just write a letter campaign. So listen, I know many people, <laughs> reading and writing frightens many people. People are fearful of that. <laughs> but listen, let me say to you all, first, as far as the letter writing campaign for our good brother, Dr. Johnson, Grandmaster J, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of. Putting letters on paper, no, they allow you to do that. It's being sent to them. They, they don't care. And no, they're not coming to knock on your door. They're not watching you. Not for that. For all of you who are afraid of me, oh, yeah, you send your letter, they get your name. Have you lost your mind? Don't you understand? They have your name already. They've got your name, your social security number. For many of you, your blood pressure, your DNA, they have it all. Do you understand? They have it all. So you aren't doing anything, uh, giving them anything, information. That's foolishness and nonsense propagated by people who have fear. I, I listen to the YouTube people talk about that. Oh, they're just trying to get a list of people so they can get the names of the people and know they got your name. They got a number for you. It's called a social security number. They got it for you. They have your address. They have your bank account. Don't you understand? You can't live there without that. In fact, in fact, all over the world, these W's have taken control of the financial system all over the world. They use that information, all of it, to track you. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, YouTube. Don't you understand? All of that information is compiled and gathered. Whether you write the letter for Dr. J or not. <laughs> Dr. J, Grandmaster J, I'm mixing them up, both of them. Yeah, but Dr. J, Grandmaster J, Dr. John Fitzgerald Johnson, all of him needs your support. So what we're going to do today, and, and, and listen, I'm smiling so that you guys all know I'm not uh, angry. No, not that. No, listen. My aunt was concerned that something, you know, she said, oh, something might happen to him, I mean, she said, oh, what happened to Dr. King? And oh, what happened to Malcolm X? Okay, listen. Both those men were courageous men. They understood one thing. Inaction is what you should fear. These people are going to do the things that they're going to do whether you act or not. So you might as well act. Because if you act, you may be able to prevent them from doing what they do. Do you understand? If you don't act, then they're going to run over you. These are who these W's are. They will never change. Okay? So I'm saying all that. So look, listen, it, 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 you need to relax. Go ahead and write this letter. Get this letter out. We need to have thousands, millions of these letters going in. We need to have so many letters going into these people that their servers crash. Do you understand? Okay, so that's the fear of, oh, they're going to come and get me. Get rid of that. It's not necessary. Don't allow these other people I told you about in the last few videos. These people uh, said our good brother was an agent and this and that. But they're not stepping up right now apologizing because he's clearly not that. But they're not going to use their platform to come out and say, hey, look, I made a mistake and I apologize to you, brother. Uh, how many of these letters can I write? In fact, use your platform to go out and tell all of the people around the world, all of your hundreds of thousands of followers, you go out and you tell them, hey, look, y'all, we need to write this letter. Okay? That's what I'm expecting. Other than that, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I need to put you in the coward category. I don't know. We'll, we'll check that out in the next video. So right now, listen. I'm going to put these glasses on and I'm going to read you a letter and, and I'm going to show you the letter. I'm going to try to put it into the video, okay? And I'm going to try to read it for you 
I'm definitely going to read it for you, but I'm going to try to put it in the video so you can copy it. Just copy it. Just copy it. You can make your slight changes or you can use it as a template. You don't have to use the verbatim. I write, I write what I write. You write what you write. But the point is, get the letter in requesting the, 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 the release of this brother. And just, just, just so you know, let me just make it clear. Our good brother, Dr. John Fitzgerald Johnson, uh, Grandmaster J, Supreme, the founder and Supreme Commander of NFAC, uh, he, his health, he, he's a strong brother, so he's good. He's going to be okay. But he underwent a major surgery, okay? They opened his chest up. Open heart surgery is very invasive. They, they went in, okay? So anybody going through a procedure like, like that, they need quality, quality care, 24 hours a day, around the clock. And they need to have that care from people who love them, who care about them, who do not view them as just a patient, a, a, a number, or a, a way to get uh, some kind of profit through health care benefits. Do you understand? So the U.S. has a program that is called Compassionate release. This program makes exceptions for individuals who are going through similar situations as our, as our brother. Uh, and so he's, he's, he's clearly, uh, clearly a, a perfect candidate for the program. But we as people, people who look like me and, me and you, People who look like you and me, we have to take responsibility for our, our brother and, and, and for people who stand up for us and commit all that they have for us and our children and our future. And when they are in need of help, we're supposed to help them. And right now, our brother is in need of some support. So let's help and support this brother. Okay, so I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to read this letter to you. I'm going to read the letter to you um, and you can type it write it, you can copy it, you can use the exact same letter if you want, so you don't have to, you know, be fearful of writing if you don't have the skill to write, that's okay, don't be afraid, just copy it, it's not a problem, no copyright issue or nothing like that, don't be afraid, but go ahead and get this letter out to support our brother, so let me read this, I don't, I don't want to hold you, I'm going to read this for you, get these glasses, <laughs> I'm Babu. <laughs> you look that up in Swahili. Babu. <laughs> All right, hold on. All right, everybody. Okay. All right. So let me make sure this is okay here. All right, good, good, good. All right. Uh, to whom it may concern, okay? It is with the utmost respect, sincerity, and optimism that I, your name, in my case, Thomas Dorsey, that I write you now on behalf of Dr. John Fitzgerald Johnson. Unbridled hope compels me and millions of others like me to submit for your kind and thoughtful consideration this impassioned plea for your help. Dr. Johnson, a devoted humanitarian committed to the uplifting of all people worldwide, is currently being held in Ashland FBOP. The critical nature of his current health condition his unjust conviction, which resulted in a seven-year sentence, and his uncompromising loyalty to the core American principles of the pursuit of life, liberty, and justice for all undoubtedly make him, makes him the quintessential and prime candidate for compassionate release. We recognize 
and understand. I'm sorry, no, change that. We recognize, acknowledge, and are certain of the tremendous degree of integrity with which you conduct sensitive affairs such as the one that currently envelops Dr. Johnson. United in solidarity, we the people from across the world whose lives have been positively transformed by Dr. Johnson, seek your humane and reasonable attention to the matter with bated breath. Humbly, urgently, and with God's speed, a request for the compassionate release of Dr. Johnson is sought for the following most serious and we believe most undeniable reasons. The most significant and pressing issue confronting Dr. Johnson presently is a critical heart condition that had recently threatened his life, prompting doctors to diagnose him with having only 24 months left to live. Medical officials explained to Dr. Johnson death was imminent unless he underwent major heart surgery. This condition arose within three years during which Dr. Johnson was being held in custody at the Ashland FBOP. In an effort to save his life, Dr. Johnson underwent open heart surgery in December of 2023. Upon completion of the operation, he was placed back into the Ashland FBOP. The intensity and the severity of the heart procedure undertaken by Dr. Johnson requires proper intensive aftercare to reduce the risk of death following such a severe and invasive procedure. This type of proper care clearly cannot be obtained and provided in such a facility as the one in which Dr. Johnson is being held. Furthermore, the quality and level of care required to provide Dr. Johnson with the best chance for survival can only truly be provided outside of the facility in which he is being detained. Notwithstanding, notwithstanding the only real guarantee of receiving the kind of necessary rehabilitative around the clock care Dr. Johnson needs can only be provided by and under the supervision of family, friends, and loved ones. In Dr. Johnson's current plight, the absence of such care by the aforementioned is possibly and most likely tantamount to a death sentence. Considering Dr. Johnson's extensive history of positive contributions to society, his loyal and dedicated military service, his community religious activities, his unblemished record prior to the incident in question, and the fact that he has not been and is not now a danger to society, I and we implore you to hear and consider our plea for you to give Dr. Johnson, Dr. John F. Johnson, a compassionate release. The only clear and present danger that exists here is the unnecessary risk that the punishment bestowed upon Dr. Johnson, justly or unjustly, does not fit the crime. Dr. Johnson is and has been a positive force for good in the world. The overall preponderance of lifelong good deeds exercised by this good man surely merits his being shown and awarded 
compassion considering his current health condition. Consequently, he cannot get the help and care he needs in the FBOP. Please forgive the redundancy here. It derives from our deep and heartfelt desire for the righteous and just treatment of a man whose character we know to be honorable, noble, and virtuous. Therefore, we remain steadfast in our conviction that this action is deserved and respectfully request that you grant Dr. Johnson a compassionate release. Thank you for hearing my plea with sincere respect and gratitude. Your name is it. Now, this is the letter that, that I submitted. And I'm coming to you now to show you. Ooh, no bolt of lightning. Mm -hmm. No. You just submit the letter. Okay? Nothing to fear. Fear will paralyze you and prevent you from doing those things that come natural to a human being. Let me just add one thing here and then I'm going to let you go. Please write that letter. You can copy that letter. There's no issue. You can copy it. I'll try to put a copy of it at the end of this, at the end of this uh, video, okay? But listen carefully to me and understand. Every year, we are presented with a symbol. A symbol of a great man. And that great man is Dr. Martin Luther King. We're presented with a symbol of him. Now, understand, he's a great man. I love what he did for his people. He loved his people. He sacrificed. He gave the ultimate, ultimate sacrifice. He gave his life. Now, you must understand in the beginning, I told you, that we have to look at things from a black African perspective, from a black African consciousness. And because, like in the last video, I told you we were at war, and we are, both literally and figuratively. Literally, you live in the United States, you're a citizen there, that means you contribute your taxes, you pay money, that money is being used to buy weapons, to bomb some other people, you are at war. But there is also another war that's taking place. For you specifically, people that look like me and you. The war on our minds. And this is the perspective that I'm giving you now. Our good brother, our dear brother, Dr. Martin Luther King, another brave, courageous man who gave his life for his people. He loved his people. But that symbol has a dual meaning and purpose. There are those who understand if you present to a group of people a man who stood up for his people and because he stood up for his people, the price he had to pay was his, with his life then there are some men who will be afraid. There will be many men who will be afraid to do that because they believe that that will be their fate. The other side, that's one side, remember I told you, the duality. The other side is he's a hero for all people. This is true. He is a hero for all people. That is presented to you also so that you believe that this aspect of his action supersedes the other and this aspect of his action being good and being for all people and you know nonviolent and, and all of these things is the superior ideology and approach to solving our problem. So support him. 
believe the way he believed. That's true. It's very true. But it's not the absolute truth because information is being left out, which is the natural instinct of human beings to protect themselves and prevent their death. When you have individuals who are seeking to take your life, liberty, and justice, then you are supposed to rise up with courage to protect your life and the lives of others who look like you and your children, okay? And this is what our good brother, Dr. Graham, <laughs> Dr. John Fitzgerald Johnson, Grandmaster Jay, this is what he did. This is what he did for us. As I told you before, he's alive today. He's with us. We do not and should not wait, wait until he's no longer here to sing his praises, to support him. Do you understand? Okay. All right. So look, uh, I gave you the letter. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Hey, 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 listen, Auntie Brent, I'm smiling. All right, I'm smiling for you. All right, and I'm smiling for all of you. I love you. I love you more than you know. It's uh, it's real. And that's why I love and respect our good brother, Dr. Grandmaster J. <laughs> I keep doing that. I can't believe that. Yes, Dr. Grandmaster J. Yes, Dr. John Fitzgerald Johnson. Uh, no, I love and respect this brother and all of the good brothers and sisters of MFAC family. Because they're in their right minds and they love us and they, they love us enough to remove their fear, replace that fear with courage, and then do what's necessary to protect people that look like me and you and our children and our future. So I'll have love and respect for them until I leave this earth. And I'll do everything that I can with every breath in my body to support them. And this is what you should do. Anyone, anyone who steps into the fire on your behalf, you should support. Okay, everybody, thanks. Listen, love you all. Uh, you get the video, go ahead and check it out. And then... Uh, Send that letter. The deadline is March 1st. I put in the, uh, one of the other videos the information of where you send it. I'll, I'll put it in here too. Okay? I love you all. Thank you to our good brother, Dr. John Fitzgerald Johnson, known as Grandmaster Jay. Thank you to the brave brothers and sisters of MFAC. And thank you to all of you who stand up and do what's necessary to solve our problem. Thank you. Those in the past, those in the present, and those in the future. Take care. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru.